and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Team, check this out. I've got an incredible guest with us here today. An amazing person. I've listened to several of her podcasts. She's got an incredible website, and we're going to get more to that later. But check this out. Today, you get Barbara Savona. Y'all give it up for Barbara. Thank you, Gary. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh. Thank you for uh, joining me today. And um, you've got quite the fan club. I, I, fan club. I can still hear them clapping. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Easy now. Easy now. Well, hey, Barbara, I want to give you a chance to um, let you introduce yourself a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm so thankful to be here and spend these minutes with you today in your audience. I'm Barbara Savona. I'm Sprout Marketing CEO and co-founder. Um, about 13 years ago, I left the property management side. I'd been on the as a manager, a regional, and um, eventually I was actually in the advertising agency space and I started Sprout Marketing. So we are a marketing platform, a membership-based platform for property management and for communities nationwide. We kind of help them with their outreach, their resident retention, social media, all that good stuff in a really easy format. And then a couple of years ago, I started my own podcast. So you guys might have listened to Marketing Home, Marketing You. Um, it's been going for almost three years. And so I'm a fellow podcast fan. <laughs> That is fantastic. And Barbara, I have to tell you, I've, I've gone through your website and we're going to put the link to your website in the show notes because I really do believe there's so much valuable content in your website and there's there's extra stuff in there too. So you guys have to check it out to see that extra stuff that's in that website um, and also make sure you listen to Barbara's podcast as well. Some great stuff, great content. I, I took some time to listen to several of the episodes and you just kind of get drawn in. So Great job. Nice work, you. Thank well, you, Gary. As, as a leader in the multifamily industry, I always love to connect with leaders and find out what inspires them. Almost like take a peek behind the curtain and, and see what is this inspiration behind the curtain that really allows these leaders to do the amazing things that they do. So I reached out to you and asked you two to three points. What inspires you? And you came back with some amazing stuff. And I can't wait to ask you these questions. So the first one that you shared was small actions leading to larger results, like momentum. So Barbara, share with us a little bit what that means to you. Yeah, so I love, first of all, the fact that you pulled the inspiration because it's it's interesting. We are all in this space, but what drives us is so different. And for me, I've always been fascinated by how something so small can turn into something big, like a tiny little acorn can turn into this massive tree. And I love trees. I've always loved <laughs> being outside. So um, that's kind of the idea. There's a, a, a proverb that says little by little, a little becomes a lot. Mm -hmm. And in my own life, I've just kind of observed how it's people that do little actions daily that end up being really successful. And it's not always that they're financially successful or whatever it is that they, you know, the person that checks in on friends consistently a little by little, they become known as like a great friend or you know, the person that checks on their team, they become known as a caring leader. And mm -hmm. I'm just fascinated by how something like that can pick up and gain momentum. And I feel like those small actions kind of shape our identity of who we are. So I try to be really thoughtful about what are the little things that I want to do daily to really make me the person that, you know, I want to be. That is so amazing. And, and I love one of the key words that you shared there that really resonated with me is consistency. And I, I agree with you 100%. When you do these small things consistently, then it creates these habits. And one of my favorite books is, we were talking about books earlier, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he talks about those small things that, you know, as you continuously do those, they stack and you get these wins. But but to your point, Barbara, those those small moments, simply connecting with a friend and building those relationships so powerful and it means a lot right absolutely and i'm so glad you mentioned james clear that's probably <laughs> one of my top five books i absolutely love that book and he talks about that one percent better principle of yeah. I, I shared that recently on linkedin that you know a lot of times people want to overhaul and i just find that very stressful very mm -hmm 
up an undue pressure. So to me, what, back to kind of those small things, it's whether you're wanting to get better at marketing, sometimes because that's what I speak on, people say, well, how do I do it? And I say, well, you know what? You just start. You, If it's that you want to get better on Instagram, you get on there and you show up every day. Mm-hmm. If you want to write a blog, you write a blog regularly, you know? And so I think that, that we, like the book actually, I think there's a line where he says that we overestimate these big pushes and we underestimate the little small things. And so I love talking to people about that because we get crippled with thinking, oh, I don't have time, I don't have this. But if we break it down super tiny, most of us have time to do one small action. Oh, that is so good. I, I think we get overwhelmed when we think of goals or changing ourselves. We're like, oh my gosh, this thing is so big. But Barbara, you, I mean, you just hit it around the head. If we start doing these little things, a little at a time, it builds momentum and it create, turns into something amazing. So I love that so much. Now, the second thing you shared with me was seeing the potential in others and then helping them reach their goals. So tell tell us a little bit more about that and why that inspires you. So I think that, you know, for a lot of the guests that I've had on my podcast, I've been very curious to ask them, you know, how do they want to be thought of? You know, when, when we think about people now call it a personal brand, it used to just be <laughs> called reputation. Right. But, you know, my friend Tony Susan, I were just talking about that, how that is really what it is. It's your reputation. And when I think about that, someone asked me, well, what, how do you want to be remembered? And I thought, I just want to be known as someone that encourages others. And really to encourage, it just means to add courage. And, Ooh. you know, yeah, sometimes we don't think about it <laughs> like that. But I think like how much one, once somebody sees a potential in you, and I've had so many people do this for me in times where I felt vulnerable or like mm-hmm. I wasn't qualified. And when somebody else sees that potential and they, in a sense, add courage by their words, by their, you know, um, I think real life examples. So it's not flattery. It's actual Mm -hmm. feedback that is constructive that says, hey, I, you know, you might not think that you're good at this, but you know what? I see how you are when you're talking to this team member and you can light them up or I've seen how you tackle a problem and you're really strategic. The very first time that one of my uh, mentors who I used to work for at Rent Media Solutions, she said, you're really good at speaking in front of people. And I said, <laughs> no, I'm not. She said, There's <laughs> no way. And her name was Nancy. And she said, no, you really are. And all of a sudden it made me feel like, okay, she thinks that maybe, maybe somebody else thinks that too. Mm-hmm. And so you start kind of acting in a sense, like the praise that you received. And so to me, I think that we need cheerleaders in our life. And Mm -hmm. when I got into multifamily and when I started Sprout, it was really as a way to be a cheerleader to the property managers. And so that inspires me just to think that one thing that I say to you or that you say to me could change the trajectory of the day, the week, the year, my life, who knows? And so what a cool thing to think that we can do. Wow, that is so amazing. And and everything that you're sharing with me, just to kind of add courage. What an amazing, you know, encouragement. We, we kind of take for granted that word. Hey, I'm encouraging you. But the way you put it of adding courage, that's, that is such a kind of a transformational change of perspective on the way you see that. And for someone to add courage to somebody else or for somebody else, for me, it just feels like generosity. And so a lot of times, you know, we see somebody doing something pretty cool, something we admire, whatever. And when we're generous, we like you to your point, we add courage to them. And so I encourage Barbara, that, that's such a neat phrase. And I want to encourage everybody to really take that to heart. Re, re-listen, rewatch what, what how Barbara kind of explained that add courage piece because your generosity could transform somebody's life by simply adding courage to whatever they may be doing that maybe they're kind of self-doubt. But Barbara, that's that's like one of my favorite things that you that I've learned this year so far. It's amazing. Well, that's awesome. You know what? I feel like I just got something from you though. The fact that you tied giving away, you know, encouragement as a gift and as a generosity, I think that's so cool. It's almost like, you know how the airport, it says, if you see something, say something. Say something. This right. is the positive version. If you see something <laughs> in someone else, say something. 
Oh, uh, one hundred percent. I believe that is probably one of the best things. And 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 everyone that's watching this, I want you to take away that if you see something, say something in a positive approach, um, you really can make a huge difference and and help people get to something they may not have otherwise gotten to, and they just needed that generosity that that add courage, encouragement um, from you. So make sure you take that heart, and I encourage you, add courage, rewatch that, amazing. <laughs> Hey, Barbara, you got one more thing that you shared with me that inspires you. Um, and, and you kind of touched on it a little bit beforehand. It's it, you, you noted power of marketing and personal brand. So share with us what that means and how that inspires you. So I, this is something that I've thought about and I, I didn't realize that not everybody does it, but I think it's why I was drawn to marketing is that when you walk into a business or a space or really any environment, there's a feeling that comes with it. And it can be the music, the smell, it can be just the vibe of the salesperson. You know, if I walk into a store and the women look very snobby at me, you know, <laughs> even if it's just perceived, right? There's like yeah. a feeling of like, oh, do I belong here? Versus if somebody says, hey, come on in, we're so happy to have you and you immediately feel a part of something. So I've always been fascinated how marketing really can do that. It can affect all of the senses. And as an extension of that, I see really this year, people really looking at personal brand as an extension of their marketing. And I think we're seeing more traction on LinkedIn. We're seeing people even that work for companies, not just self-employed people or people that have a podcast starting to really embrace their online voice, their online presence. And so I think about that and it's just, I guess what insp inspires me about that is that now we have the potential to have such a reach, you know, where before mm -hmm. when I first started, you had to go to a conference and speak on a stage and you maybe got a few hundred people and you could keep in touch a little bit, but with, with marketing the way it is today and personal brand, you really can decide how do I want to present myself that is authentic? Obviously, mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake we see sometimes in authenticity and it eventually people will see through. So what I love about the idea of this is it's a way to craft your story, but you can think about it the way that a brand would craft their story. And I just yeah. think that that's really powerful, especially when people want to own their career, they want to own the trajectory of where their career is going. Mm -hmm. I think a, a marketing approach to personal brand is going to be a really powerful way for people to do that. Oh my gosh, that is that is so good. And and Barbara, there were two key words from what you shared with me that really kind of jumped out. One was decide. I think a lot of us when we're on social media or whatever, we just kind of go with the flow. We we don't decide who and the second word is authentic. Authentic. We don't decide who the authentic person is. We create this or by default this facade mm -hmm. and hope for the best. And to your point, when we decide to become an authentic person, that's when we really capture the brand of who we are as a person. And, and that is pretty inspiring. Absolutely. And I think something to add to that would be, you know, I was talking to another industry uh, friend of mine and I was saying, you know, I've noticed that you, the, the, I really like how you show up on your social platforms. It's very different. And he said, you know, I'm just not the selfie person. I'm not going to do a <laughs> selfie. That's not it. And he said, there's other people that are showing a lot of photos of themselves and that is authentic to really their story. And I think that that's the thing is, while it is marketing, you don't want to adapt to try to be everybody in the industry. I think the biggest thing is to say, what do my friends, what do my family come to me for? What do they love about me? What could I talk about for hours? Clearly, Gary, you're going to have to cut me off. What can I talk about for hours? And then figure out how to meld those things. And then the marketing pieces, you want to make it visually appealing. You want it mm -hmm. to catch the eye because there's so much on there. But again, that's where it's like, I'm not saying to craft a brand. I'm saying yeah. just to figure out how to share your story in a way that is going to resonate with people, but it's oh, yeah. still really true to yourself at the end of the day. They, I, Hunter, I, I, I so agree with you. I think you have to find your voice. And then once you find that, that's what you share with the world, whether that be, you know, the selfies, some some <laughs> visuals that you find or or even your actual voice, um, whatever it is that you find the authentic you and going back to what you shared earlier, the authentic and decide to, to put that out there. Um, and 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 I I think there's also so many other implications with finding your personal brand, because if you're working for a company and you have this brand 
and you're just putting yourself out there, people start gravitating towards you, your brand, and then ultimately the company that you may be working for, either a, either as a customer or as another associate employee at that company because they recognize you and your brand and your voice. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the same thing is true. I mean, you you share your podcast, you connect with people, and now people are like, man, that barber's kind of cool. I'm going to go check out her website. And all of a sudden, you've got more customers. Yeah. And I think to your point, what's really interesting is if you do fake who you are, you're going to attract this this. It might not be bad people. It's just people <laughs> that think they're getting something else. Yeah. And so that to me is where what it qualifies your network in a way with people that are like-minded, even if it's not that you agree on everything, but they like the way that you present, that you see the world, that you showcase, and you won't be for everyone. And that's actually a good thing. So I think that's a really good way to look at it is you don't want to be for every single person. So good. So good. And one of the things my dad always told me is when you're honest, you have less to remember. So, <laughs> so true. <laughs> man, just just be you. And, and I love how you added to that is because you'll attract the people that, you know, ultimately yeah. is is for you when you're honest and authentic and you choose and decide. Barbara, you've had so many great comments and quotes. Add courage. Oh, my God. For me, that's like a whoosh. I'm <laughs> I so glad. So <laughs> I love it so much. Well, Barbara, we're getting close to the end of our time. And I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought before we wrap up. Yeah, I think that the industry that we work in with multifamily can be very challenging for many. And I think this is a good time for me to, in a sense, I'd love to just leave everyone with that encouraging message to say, you know, be a good employee, but also take care of yourself. If you've not taken time to rest, to regroup and really look at the way that you're spending your time. I know not everyone has the uh, luxury of deciding exactly how they spend every minute of their day, but really making sure that what we're putting our efforts in is aligning to our goals that we have and then finding people around you that'll support you. If it's not where you're at right now, you know, making it a goal to say, how can I be with other like-minded people or a company that's like-minded? And I think things are shifting in our industry. So having a voice and standing up for yourself, but then also being able to fall back on being a really incredible employee, a great human being. And with things like recession talk and all of this, I feel like the best future proofing of your career is just to be the person that delivers and does the work and is that genuine person. And I think you, everyone will land where they need to land if they follow that. Wow, that's so good. And Barbara's adding courage to y'all's life. Uh, it's just just great commentary right there. And 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 I again, I'm going to add courage. I'm going to encourage you guys to go back and re-listen to what Barbara just shared with us today because it truly is such such valuable insight and, and something I'd love for you guys to write down, take notes, and really apply it to your life. And as Barbara said earlier, small moments can really add up and and do something amazing. And that's that's inspiring. Barbara, you've been amazing. I can't thank you enough for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Team, make sure you check out Barbara's website. I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Her podcast, all the information she's got there and all the extras we talked about earlier. Make sure you check out her website because it is pretty impressive. Guys, thank you again for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Barbara, thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye, Gary. Thank you. Bye.